My name is Raymond McDonald, born in Apostle, Texas. That's where I'm from. That's where I was born. Growing up, I remember my mom would write a note to a neighbor to for eggs, bread, and butter, and sugar. And I would take this note. And every single time I would take this note and knock on the door, the lady always opened, I'd give her a note, and, and she gave me everything that was on my mom's list so she can feed us. I remember days like that. I have a paper that I have here that I, I just wanna, I just remember some of the things that went on with me in my life. And I was probably like six years old because I was going to school and adding and doing math. I feel no pain. Breathing is more important. You guys are probably wondering why, what do I mean by that? I feel no pain. Breathing is more important. Ah, that's a tough one. When you get used to the pain where you don't even care anymore because breathing is important because somebody's trying to take your life when you're only six years old. Mental illness has no face. People always told me, well, you look fine. You don't look like you have anything wrong with you. Uh, you're fine. I mean, somebody always judging you and telling what you look like and you don't have this wrong with you and stuff like that. But the truth is mental illness has no face and we have got to deal with it. We have to deal with it. A lot of uh, people have mental illness and mental illness comes in any type depression, pill popping, drugs, mental illness comes in all shapes and forms. So mental illness, mental illness really has no face. My dad never was there for me. I didn't even know who my dad was. Uh, now I could kind of see the pictures why people ignored me. People didn't see me. My teachers didn't want to help me in any type of way. Cause I was, you know, being abused so bad that um, I actually was getting ready for school. My pants was stuck to my leg because my flesh had been ripped open. Um, by repeating meetings. I was going to school like this and I would never tell anybody because I had two other siblings. They were younger than me and I was the oldest and I guess I wanted to protect them and because I know that he would harm them because he told me if I would say anything. So I never told anything. My teacher didn't even see me. She looked right through me. And now back then I didn't really know why but I believe it was the color of my skin. And I know that she saw me because um, she seen the pain in my eyes when I'm doing math and stuff, but she didn't reach out one hand to see if I was okay or to stop this madness before this person killed me. Foster care was like a bad name, a bad name to me growing up. You know, you were treated differently if you were in foster care. People laughed at you if you were in foster care because you didn't have your mom or dad there. But, but before I even made it to foster care, I have to go back and tell you this one story because not all of my life was bad or else I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Not at all. I wouldn't be here. And I always ask, ask myself, uh, why am I here? And I know the answer now because God was always with me along my whole journey. He was always there. That's all. I had to grow up real quick and figure out um, how to deal with this. So to make a long story short, I'm trying to pull my pants because they're stuck to my leg. I probably hadn't been changed in days because the pants, like I said, are stuck to my leg. It has game green and I'm trying to use the bathroom. And then this guy's dad, his stepdad comes in. He goes, why? What's taking so long? And he see my leg. He goes, Oh my God, who did this to you? Who did this to you? Then that brief pain went away. Went away when he took me to the hospital. But then the pain came right back because I was taken away from my family. My brothers, my brother and my sister. So the pain came back when I knew that I was not, not going to be able to go back there. But at the same time, I was helped. I was saved. So I'm in the hospital. Doctors are giving me all types of medicines and, and um, 
antibiotics, but I'm rejecting all of these. I'm re rejecting them all because I have nobody there. None of my family there, somebody who really cared to touch me. All I was was just a piece of meat on a table and I was black and they knew because they had to help me. That's how I felt. So the doctor says, if I don't take this medicine and I don't get better, my leg might have to be cut off. So as a kid, you're thinking about your leg being cut off. As a kid, your life is just starting. A little bit more, this candy stripe, striper came in. I don't know if you guys, this is way back then, candy stripers are working in a hospital voluntarily. And she would come in and she tried to get me to get up and I just wouldn't get up. And next day she'd come in, she was volunteering her time and I just wouldn't get up. I was, I gave up. I didn't want to live anymore. But she came in again and said, hey, I have a toy that I want you to look at it and see. So you have to get into your wheelchair and I'll wheelchair you over there so that you can see this toy. I'm like, oh my goodness, I was, that got me up. She reached out to me, she touched me. I don't know what her name was, but if I can tell her, I'll tell her that she actually saved my life. Cause I got up and there was a little pool table and I, I got up every morning, I took my medicine, I started to get better, my, my gangrene started to go away and I was shooting pool on this little pool table and, and just something like that, a touch. One of my poems is just called a touch. Where would we be in the world without a touch? Where would we be in the world without a hug was also a touch. Where, we, where would we be without a kind word which is also a touch? Where would we be without somebody loving us which is also a touch? I thought that Foster care was a bad name, but foster care actually saved my life. And where does kids go when nobody wants them? There's several places that they could go. Um, some wind up dead, some wind up uh, in jail, a lot of them in jail, and some wind up in foster care, which is me. So here I am, I already knew about foster care it was a bad name in our family, like calling CPS and somebody and stuff like that, and you know, and here at the time, if somebody would have cared even enough, my teacher, I know that she smelled my rotten flesh, but she didn't even care. Nobody cared back then. I want to say that foster care did save my life. It did save my life. I just wish one time I could meet a family that treated me and my brothers and sisters the same as their kids, the same love as their kids. I was craving it. I never had it. Craving love. But... There was something else there and it was darkness, complete darkness. I'm gonna perform this song. Uh, it's called Closest to You. Um, and I do everything freestyle, so I don't know what's gonna come out, but I, I'm gonna try my best. Here we go. Closest to you? Supposed to show you love. Closest to you will never leave you alone. Closest to you will make you feel good. My daddy once told me the closer to you can do your pain. I never thought it was true until I went through it myself. My mama wasn't there, but yet she was there. Sometimes Satan get through the cracks. Oh man, oh man. Not everything is good. When the closest one lets somebody in, the closest to the closest one to you will do you wrong. That's why I'm singing this song. I felt a sharp pain in my back. I didn't know where it was at. I let somebody in. And they put a knife in my back. Closest to you. 
should always show you love. Closest to you should be there when everything is going on. My mom sent me to my neighbor. She was close to me too. But sometimes you know how people treat you. I was told this a long time ago, action, action was better than words. People said they were going to feed me, but I never got served. My great, great, great grandpa, they hung him from a tree. They hung him for no reason. He was black like me. Now we're living now, we're in 2020. COVID has changed the whole world now. People are dying every day. They're dying without no reason. Black people dying in two. It don't matter what the color of your skin. When COVID-19 come for you, if you got a mental illness, a mental condition. COVID will come and snuff you out. So life belongs to the strongest. Closest to you. So the closest to you is supposed to be your protection. At least that's what I thought. But sometimes people get in. Like a wolf in the hen house, I'm screaming out. Mama, this man is trying to kill me. What is she now? She let the man get too close. He got a needle in her arm. I think it was called heroin. My mom was hooked now. She let somebody get too close. for hearing me. Thank you for seeing me. And thank you, Jeanette. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Change. Oh yeah, and by the way, not to change the subject again, I finally got my birth certificate. Who celebrates that? I do. I've been waiting for years and years to get my birth certificate because without it, I was a nobody and that's how people treated me. I want to challenge the whole world for one day to do what Jesus would do for one day. Just one day. But a touch, a smile, a hug, you have a nice day, you look good. And let me know how that changed somebody else's life and how it also changed your life or what you went through on that one day. Let me know. Thank you.